Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. We bless God for allowing us to come again together, spend this time together again. We pray that you will click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Our scripture this morning will come from Psalm 115, verse 1, 12 through 13, and then verses 16 through 18. And I will be reading from the contemporary English version. And it reads, the subject of it is, the Lord deserves to be praised. And it reads, we don't deserve praise. The Lord alone deserves all the praise because of his love and faithfulness. Verse 12 says, the Lord will not forget to give us his blessing. He will bless all of Israel and the family of Aaron. All who worship the Lord, no matter who they are, will receive his blessing. Verse 16 says, the Lord has kept the heavens for himself, but he has given the earth to us humans. The dead are silent and cannot praise the Lord. Verse 18, but we will praise him now and forevermore. Shout praises to the Lord. The God that we serve has proven himself to be a God of wonders who deserve to be praised and who deserve to be worshipped. And getting my little speech together, I decided to ask Google, why does God deserve the glory? And this is what Google said. God deserves all the glory because of his sovereignty. God is ruler over all he created, and he created everything. There is no place we can go that does not belong to God. Our very existence belongs to him. And Google went on to say, according to his eminence as creator, God deserves all the glory that is due his name. I was somewhat amazed that Google gave that answer. At one time, Pastor Davis and I had an Alexa. And Alexa is a small device that you can talk to and you can ask it questions and it will give you answers. And Alexa knows about everything. It's like an encyclopedia. So Pastor Davis and I decided to ask Alexa some Bible questions. And every time we asked Alexa about the Bible, Alexa would say, I don't know that. So this tells me that somebody had not programmed Alexa to know about God. But let us not get it twisted. The God we serve, the all-knowing God, the all-seeing God, he deserves all the praise and the honor that is due his name. So if you do not know this God that created you, you need to get to know this God because he is so worthy to be praised. Our song this morning is, You Deserve the Glory. You do miracles so great. And I'm a testimony. He does miracles so great. There is no one else like the God that we serve. This God sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. He deserved all the glory. There is no one else 
Father God, we thank you now. Lord, we bless your name. God, we thank you that you are great. Lord, we acknowledge the fact that there is no one else like you. We praise you this morning. We honor you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We glorify you for you are worthy of all the honor, all the praise, and all the glory. God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you do. We thank you for the way you do it. Yes, Lord, we magnify you this morning. We glorify your name for you are great and you are worthy. Yes. Now, Lord, we ask you to forgive us for our sins. Move upon our hearts today that we will be about your business. Study your word, Father God, that your word will come forth, that lives will be changed. Habits will be thrown away. Hope will be renewed. Lord, we glorify you this morning for you are great and you are God. Lord, we praise you. We worship you this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Lord, you great. You do miracles so great. There is no Hallelujah. Like you. There is none like you, Lord. There is, no there is none like you. like you. You are. You, are great. you, you do, do miracles. miracles so great. There is none. There is, no one else like there is none like you. There is no one like you. serve the awesome and the amazing God. There is no one like our God. <laughs> there is no one like him. He is God all by himself. And he is great. Let me call your attention again in Matthew chapter 24 in the New Testament. 
The book is St. Matthew, the chapter is 24. The verses are 15 through 22. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22 is where we are today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22. <clears throat> we are still looking at this tribulation period. This is a period after the church is gone. This is a period that you don't want to be around for. This is a period where those who don't believe that Jesus Christ has come already, those who have not confessed him as Lord, will be in the midst of. It's a great timing to, to talk about this tribulation period because we think we're going through something right now. There's a period that's coming that even that is even worse than the period that we're in today. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22. <clears throat> it's where we are. Matthew chapter 24, verses 15 through 22. And you found that you will discover these words, and I'm reading from the New King James Version. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of, the, out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there shall be great tribulation, such as has not been seen in the beginning of the world unto this time, since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor even, nor, nor ever shall be. And unless, un, and unless those days be shortened, were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. I want to simply talk about the abomination of desolation. The abomination of desolation. As we've seen in previous pericopes and previous verses, Jesus is speaking in what is known as the Olivet Discourse. And as he is speaking in verses 1 through 2, he talks about the fact that the temple will be torn down. And he talks about the fact that the disciples comes and asks the question, when will these things or this age come to an end? He deals with the fact on the mountain of Olivet that don't be concerned about the temple because even in today's vernacular, we are so concerned about buildings. Mm -hmm. Jesus says to them, you need to understand and I tell you these things that you will understand that this age is coming to an end. When we look at the world in which we live today, we realize very clearly that this age, this world, as we know it, is rapidly coming to an end. Amen. When he moves from verses 3 to verse 4 in the pericope found in verses number 4, through verse 14, he deals with the fact that sorrow will be so amazing. The end is still not yet, but sorrow will come. And he deals with it, first of all, in verse number three, he talks about this age is coming and this age is coming to an end. Then he says, let no man deceive you because there will come a day 
that there will be wars and rumors of wars. Nations will rise against nations. Kingdoms will fight against kingdom. And there will be famine and pestilence and earthquake in various places. This is the beginning of sorrows. That means <clears throat> that sorrows have just begun. When wars are throughout the world, when kingdoms are fighting against kingdoms, when kings are fighting against kings, in earthquakes and pestilence and famine throughout the land, yes, it is terrible, but this is just the beginning. This is not the end. As we look at COVID-19 and we look at the situation that we're in today, with our leadership, let me tell you, this is not the worst. This is not the end. So the author, Matthew, in chapter 24, he deals with, in the first 14 verses, he deals with all natural occurrences, the occurrences that take place because of nature. He deals with earthquakes. He deals with famine. He, he deals with wars. He deals with these natural occurrences. But when he gets to verse number 15, he deals with man-made enemies. He deals with Satan himself. He, he talks about the fact that you will see the abomination of desolation. Let me just unpack that for you and let you know that the apostle, the, the prophet Daniel, talks about in Daniel chapter 9 through Daniel chapter 12, he talks about this abomination of desolation. This abomination of desolation, he says, when you see it standing in the temple, you know it's, it's an emergency taking place. He says, he says to us today that this abomination of desolation that Daniel talks about, it is the Antichrist. It is that period where the Antichrist will go into the temples. The Antichrist will place an image of himself in the temple. It is a time when the Antichrist, Satan, the devil himself, will bring on one that will seduce many men. He will bring one on the scene that will, will cause men to fall away from God. We think that men are falling away from God today, and they are, but this is not the worst falling away. He says there will come a period for the abomination of desolation that was spoken of by the prophet Daniel standing in the holy place in the temple. He says that there will be a period, and this is a period after the rapture. It is a period when the church has been raptured up. It reminds us that we need to be born again. It reminds us that the great tribulation will bring about the Antichrist like never before. I can see, I can see the day where it would be easy to fool a lot of people. Because even today, with the great United States of America, many people are being fooled. Many are being loved to sleep. Many are being disastrously misleaded, misled simply because they are following a man that is not of God, but he will even think you, make you think that he is God. That's right. So it will be an easy day for, it will be an easy day for men to follow the Antichrist. It will be an easy day for men to look at a statue or an image and bow down to it. So there will be an image placed in the church. There will be an image placed in the temple. There will be an image placed in the synagogue. 
where men will come and worship the image. You remember the Hebrew boys, don't you? King Nebuchadnezzar said to them that you must bow down to this image that I've made. And the Hebrew boy said to him, O oh, king, we are not careful to answer you in this manner. Let me just share with you today, that was just a precursor. That was just a prelude to what is yet to come. So this abomination of desolation will be a time where the church will be destitute. The church will find themselves pushing to get to a stature that is not of God. And that it will be placed right in the church. It will be placed right in the temple. It will be placed right in the holy place. My dears, we have to be careful. We have to be careful what we put in the church. We have to be careful what images we place in the church. We have to be careful what we do in the church. We have to be careful how we refuse to respect the church. The church ought to be respected. The God we serve ought to be respected. The situations we find ourselves in ought to be respectful in the church. But the day is coming during this great tribulation where the Jews will have to flee. It says in verse number 15 that it will be in this holy place. This statue will be there. They will bow down and worship it. And then in verse 16 it says, then let those who are in Judah flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the, the housetop not go down to take anything out of the house. When this image is placed in the church, the Jews who have not confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord, the Jews, those in Judah who have not have, have confessed that Jesus has already come. They will flee to the mountains. Mm -hmm. This simply says that if you're living during those days, if you're not in Christ during those days, you're going to know what to do, and that is to run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to know what to do. Whether, rather, they're going to know what to do because they're going to run to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And they're going to run to the to the to the hilltops, and those who are on top of the house has no reason to come down to get your stuff. And those who are away have no reason to come from the fields to get their clothes. This will be a dreadful, dreadful day. Verse number uh, 19 declares that woe unto those who will be pregnant during that time. Woe unto those who will be feeding their babies by way of suckling during that time. Woe unto those who will be nursing their children during this time. As you know and I know, when a woman is pregnant, it's hard to carry a baby <laughs> when you're running. When a woman is pregnant, it's hard to, to, to carry a baby up on a mountaintop. When a woman is nursing her child, it is hard to carry a child and concern yourself with the child during the time that you ought to be running. Let me tell you, I warn you today, those who are not saved, those who are not born again, will be caught up in this devastation of running to the mountain. A few years ago, some packed their bags doing Y2K, and they thought that was the time to run to the mountain. Mm -hmm. Let me just say to you today, it's not time to run to the mountains. It's time to run to the Lord. Yes. It's not time to run to the mountain. It is time for us to run to God. In this day in which we live, it's time for us to run to the Lord, run to God's word, run to what God is trying to deliver to us. It is time for us to run to the Lord. There's a time that we're in today. And I admit that it's a time like never before. Mm -hmm. Racism 
has revitalized itself. Racism has given, been given the strength that it was not given in the 60s. Discrimination is well on its way again. We thought it had died out. We thought segregation was over. But racism has lifted her ugly head one more time. And those in control, those in charge, are the ones that's promoting it. Even though we live in a bad time, it would be nothing like the time that we read about today in Matthew chapter 24. Right. He says, I pray that it's not in the winter, and I pray that it's, you ought to pray that it's not in the winter, and you ought to pray that it's not on the Sabbath. We have to understand that in those days, men and women will be worshiping but they will be worshiping the wrong God. We see that today. We see men and women worshiping gods. And they're worshiping gods that cannot feel their emotions. They're worshiping a God who has no heart. They are worshiping gods that have feet and can't walk. They're worshiping gods who have hands and cannot feel. They're worshiping gods made of gold, of, made of stubble, gods made of wood, and those gods cannot help us. I'm reminded of 1 Kings chapter 18, where Elijah went up on the mountain Carmel, and when he was on Mount Carmel, there was 850 false prophets that went before him to call on their idol god Baal. The Bible says they called on Baal from morning to noonday. Elijah began to joke with them. Elijah began to make fun of them. And Elijah began to make fun of their God. He said to them, why don't you call him a little longer? Why don't you call him a little louder? Because you do know he's a God. Your God, Baal, may be on a long journey, so you may need to call him a little louder. Your God, Baal, may be sleeping. You may have to wake him up, so you need to holler at him a little louder. What Elijah was really saying to them is, the God that I serve never sleeps nor slumbers. He says, the God that I serve is not a God that's made of wood, stubble, not made of gold nor brass. The God that I serve wasn't made at all. Yes. The God that I serve is God all by himself. He was here before anything got here. He is God. Nobody made him God. In that same setting on Mount Carmel, after they had called upon their God, Baal, and he did not answer. They began to cut themselves with stones and, and began to bleed out because their God did not answer. They became the sacrifice on Mount Carmel. Yes. After they had finished, Elijah began to call on the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And when he called on them, and prior to taking on this contest, what he says is, now I'm going to call on my God. And as I call on my God, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to pay buckets of water, take buckets of water and pour it on the bullock. Take buckets of water and, and pour it on the sacrifice. Take buckets of water and pour it on the altar. And then he says, dig a trench around the altar. And when you dig a trench around the altar, I tell you what you do. You pour water in the trenches. And when Elijah called on God, he called on him and fire came down from heaven. It burned up the bullock, burned up the sacrifice, burned up the altar. And lick the water up out of the trenches. Because the God that we serve is the only true and the only living God. Amen. You see, you can't buy your God. You see, you, you can't make your God. 
You see, you can't be supportive of a God that is made of metal because he's not a God at all. Some people think that their Lexus is God. Some people think their BMW is God. Some people think their houses are God. Some people even think the temple of God is God. We need to worship God himself because there is coming a day, uh, this day of abomination of desolation. It is coming when men will worship stuff that is not of God. And they will worship things rather than God. The Bible says in verse number 20, and pray that your flight will not be in the winter or on the Sabbath. Amen. It's saying to us, make sure, make sure you're right, first of all. Make sure you're in touch with God. Make sure God has saved you. Make sure you've trusted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior because you need to understand. Those who have not received him, those who have not blessed, been blessed by him into salvation, you need to understand that you will be on the run. Yes, Lord. You will make sure, you need to make sure, you need to make sure you're right with him. It says make sure that it's not in the winter because it's cold. Make sure it's not at the Sabbath because people are caught up in their holy ceremonies. It says to us today in verse number 21, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world unto this time, no nor ever shall be. Let me just share with you today, during this great tribulation period, it will be tribulation like you've never seen before. It will be tribulation that has not existed from the beginning of time, and never will exist ever again. It is a tribulation that we will go through. It is a devastation that they will go through, rather. It is a devastation that they will go through, and this devastation will tear men, women, boys, and girls asunder. I want to remind you, young people, the devil doesn't care how young you are. The devil doesn't care if you if you are you are innocent or not. Yes. The devil the devil doesn't care if your life is in the hands of your mom and daddy or not. The devil doesn't care if you're obedient to your parents or not. The devil wants to sift you like shifting wheat. The devil wants to sift you. It will be trouble like never before. It will be trouble like never before. During this great tribulation period, I told you before, men will seek to die and they cannot die because death will be on the run. Death will be on the run. They want to die. They will prefer to die, but death will be on the run. Look at the text. We need to understand that tribulation, this great tribulation period, will be far far more devastating than what we're going through today, far more devastating than over 220,000 people dead. Let me just share with you, death will be on the run. People will still live and still be in misery like never before. Famine like never before. Wars like never before. Bloodshed like never before in this great tribulation. You don't need to be there. I want to warn you today, it's going to happen. I want to let you know today, it's going to be devastating. Yes. I want to let you know today that you haven't seen anything like it. I want to let you know today that it will never be anything like it afterwards. This day of great tribulation is coming. Mm -hmm. This day is on its way. You don't have to be here in Revelation chapter 9. You can get out of here in Revelation chapter 4. He says, he says that, verse number 22, he says that, and unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. It, it is a simple process here. He's not talking about the 24 hours that you find in a day will be shortened. 
He's not talking about the days will become short. He's not talking about taking 24 hours and making it 20 hours. But what he's saying is, as you go through this great tribulation period, that time from start to finish will have a limit. It will have a stopping point. It will have a point where it will shut off. But it will be terrible, but it has a limit. This is where God exercises his grace. And he exercises his mercy. The God that we serve always grants us mercy and he always grants us grace. He always grants us mercy. He always grants us grace. Even with Adam and Eve, he granted them mercy and grace. Yes. Even with Cain and Abel, he, he granted them mercy and grace. Mm -hmm. And he's granted us mercy and grace today. The fact of the matter is we don't deserve to be who we are. We don't deserve to live where we live. We don't deserve to be living at all. Mm -hmm. But because of God's mercy yes, and because of God's grace, Amen. we're yet on top of the ground mm -hmm. and the ground's not on top of us. He says that if this time was not shortened, then no one would be saved. But it is shortened for the very elect's sake. I want to just let you know right here, it's not talking about the elect that is born again right now. It's not talking about those of us who are already saved. It is talking about those who are not born again. During this great tribulation, the word of God will go forth. And as the word of God goes forth, God will allow somebody to still come to him. That's mercy. <laughs> That's grace. God will allow some to still come to him. And because they are newborn Christians, because they have confessed Jesus as their savior, God is going to shut the period short because of the elect's sake. Look at the God we serve. He's a merciful God. He is a God that will give us mercy when we don't deserve it. He's a God that gives us grace when we don't deserve it. And let me tell you, none of us deserve God's amazing grace. But God just keeps right on giving it to us. He just keeps right on giving it to us. He just keeps right on giving it because he is the awesome and the amazing God. I want to say to you today, this tribulation period is devastating. This tribulation period will have a moment where there will be an antichrist rising up and there will be, there will be a statue, an image, placed in the church and, and people will worship that statue and that image. Yes. The Jews will run to the mountains and they will try to escape. It says, we pray that your flight is not one that's when you're pregnant or nursing a baby. Amen. I want to say to you today, these will be awful times. Someone will come to Christ. Someone will get to know the Lord during this time. But you don't have to wait to these times to get to know him. You can have him right now. You can get to know Jesus right now. Amen. It says this time will be short for the elect's sake. This word elect are those who are saved during this period. It will be short. God doesn't want to take us out. God just keeps right on giving us a second chance. Then he gives us a third chance. Then he gives us another chance. God is giving somebody that I'm talking to today another chance because he's a merciful God. You don't have to go through this great tribulation period. You can be saved today. Yes. You can be born again right now. Amen. You can get to know him for yourself. Back home, they would say every tub has to sit on its own bottom. I want to say to you today, you cannot depend on your family structure to get you to heaven. That's right. You can't depend on whether your parents were good Christians or not to get you to heaven. Every tub must sit on its own bottom. Mm -hmm. You have to get to a point in your life where you understand that Jesus is the son of God and out of obedience unto God, he gave his life for you and for me. You may be listening to me today. I want to say that you don't go through this period. I want to say to you, the great tribulation doesn't have to be for you. I want to say to you, this awful period of, of abomination of desolation is not a part of your life. 
doesn't have to be because you can be saved right here, right now. You can be saved right on the air right now. You can be saved when you're in your living room, in your bedroom. You can be saved right now outside. You don't have to go through this hardship. You can be born again right here, right now. Just simply believe the story that over 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ gave his life as a ransom for you and me. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus died on a skull hill called Calvary. Over 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave up the ghost for you and for me. Over 2,000 years ago, mean men caught him and strapped him to the cross. And mean men, after he voluntarily gave his life, they nailed him tight to a whole rugged cross. If you believe the story that Jesus died for you over 2,000 2, years ago, that Jesus was buried in a barbed tomb, and early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. I want to say to you today, if you can believe this story, you can be saved right here, right now. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You can get to know Jesus for yourself. All you got to do is trust in the Savior. That Jesus died, Jesus was buried, Jesus rose, and Jesus was seen. If you can believe this story today, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, you shall be born again. It's a simple story. It's just believe that the only Son of God Jesus the Christ himself voluntarily gave his life as a ransom for you and me. It was a ransom because he, he bought us back. He redeemed us. Meaning he traded his life for our lives. He bought us with the precious blood of Jesus. Jesus died that day. He gave up the ghost on the cross. Between two thieves, he died. They took him off the cross, laid him in a borrowed tomb. It was a borrowed tomb because he didn't need it too long. It was a borrowed tomb because he got up out of that tomb. He gave Joseph back his brand new tomb. He rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. You can simply receive Jesus as your Savior today. You don't have to go through the tribulation. You don't have to go through hardships. Because in the great tribulation, it will be tribulation like never before. You can be born again right now. If you need Jesus, will you bow your heads with me? And simply pray this simple prayer and invite Jesus into your life. Just repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life. And make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe that you're now born again. We believe that you trust in this story. You're saved. You're on your way to heaven. And we rejoice with you. We praise God for you. And if you receive Jesus Christ doing this broadcast, please, ma'am, please, sir, inbox us and let us know that you've received him. We want to celebrate with you. We want to be excited with you. We want to glorify God with you. And if you're listening to me today and you're in between church homes or do not have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. 
You can join online. Just inbox me and we'll give you the proper information to get in tune and a part of this of your new church home. If you're struggling with sin like I do and you need prayer, inbox me and let me know. We'll be glad to pray with you and pray for you. If you're struggling with depression during this period, this is a tough period for everybody. If you're struggling with depression, inbox me and let me know. I want to pray with you and pray for you. If you're struggling with repentance, and you, every time you, you do the right thing, you go back and pick it up again, inbox me and let me know. I'll be willing to pray with you and walk through it with you. Thank you so much for attending church service here at the New Beginning Church today. Thank you for being a part of our service. Just remember, you don't have to go through the, through the great tribulation. You can be saved. And those of you who are saved, rejoice with me that we're on our way to that, that great place called heaven. Where there's no more crying, no more dying. No more sickness, no more pain. Where Jesus Christ will light up the city. Please continue to pray with us and pray for us here at the New Beginning Church. And we will be praying with and for you. It is now offering time. It is time to give to the Lord through tithes, offering, and sacrificial gifts. It's time to give to the Lord. And of course, you can give by one or three means. You can give by one or three means. You can give by way of the cash app. Our cash tag is dollar sign NBC Soul. Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls or cash tag NBC Souls. You can give by way of cash app. Or you can give by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is as we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. The third way that you can give to the New Beginning Church is mail, mail your tithes and offerings in to New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. We're looking forward to hearing from you financially. Let me thank those, both visitors as well as members, who have been faithful to their giving during this period where we have not been locally in our home church. Thank you for giving. Thank you for seeing the need to continue to give. It says much about your relationship and your fellowship with Jesus Christ. For you realize that the church still needs to be giving and then it, it helps you with your fellowship with Jesus Christ. You can join us every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for our Sunday school. Every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. for Sunday school, you can join us. Same Facebook page, same Zoom channel, you can join us. 9 a.m. And I want to thank you for joining us this morning at 1045 a.m. We're here every Sunday, 1045 a.m. Same Facebook page, same Zoom ID number and code. Also, you can join us on Wednesday nights at 720 p.m. for our Bible study. Please come and be a part of our Bible study at 720 p.m. If you have children who are not in Sunday school, please contact me, inbox me, or contact Sister Davis and uh, let us know. We want to invite you to our youth and our children's Sunday school class classes, and you can be a part of our children, participate in Kahoot, and uh, we want your children to participate also. Please join us. Please, ma'am. Please, sir. We value this time away from church because we know that God values this time and we want to make sure that we give young people opportunity to go to Sunday school. Amen. Again, thank you again. 
I want to remind you to continue to pray for our nation, pray for our world. Continue to lift everybody in prayer that you know, uh, both your friends and your enemies. Second thing I want you to thing I want you to do is to vote. We're very close to election time. Many of us have already voted in the early voting period. Please, ma'am, please, sir, vote. Please, whatever you do, vote. Lives were lost in order for you to vote. Beatings were taken in order for you to vote. Let's go out in great numbers and vote. Our prayer meeting is this Tuesday night by way of Zoom. Our prayer meeting is this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. by way of Zoom. Please, ma'am, please, sir, come. Let's pray together. Stay with the Lord together and have communion together. Next Sunday, first Sunday, we have communion at our 1045 service. Go ahead and purchase your drink, purchase your crackers or bread, and have communion with us virtually on next Sunday, first Sunday, first Sunday in November. Let's have communion together. Jesus says, for as often as we do this, we show forth his death and his suffering until he comes again. Thank you so much for joining us here on our broadcast. Thank you for being a part of our service. We at the New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, if I and I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. John 12 and 32. Again, thank you. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer. Father God, we thank you now, Lord. We bless your name. We thank you, Father God, that we're looking forward to that great morning, that great day, that great evening, that great period in time where Jesus Christ will crack the sky. He will rapture us up and we will forever be with the Lord. We pray, Father God, that this message has touched the hearts of those who were not saved. We ask you to minister to them. We ask you, Father God, to draw them by way of your Holy Spirit. That they, Father God, too, will be saved and they will get to know you in a very real way. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him the only wise and only true God, unto him be power, glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.